In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to convert black and white negatives using the new version of DxO PhotoLab 9. To convert your negatives into digital files, you'll need to either scan them or use a film digitizing adapter such as the one demonstrated here. With this film digitizer, it actually attaches to the front of a DSLR camera. Now I'm using a full frame digital SLR and this means that a 35mm frame will be captured in full on the sensor, but you'll need a macro lens that has a 1 to 1 reproduction ratio. The advantage of using a film digitizer compared to a flatbed scanner is quite evident here. A high quality macro lens on a digital camera will produce superior results to those achieved with a scanner. So now let's dive into DxO PhotoLab 9 and show you how to manipulate your digitized negatives. Let's look at a photograph I took in Kenya several years ago. So I want to convert this negative into a positive and there are several ways of doing this. So let's have a look at them. And using the light tab here, we'll move down to the tone curve and we'll invert the tone curve. So we take the bottom left hand corner, which is generally speaking the dark areas, move it to the top right and take the top right core down to the bottom left. And now we've created a positive from the negative. Now one of the problems with this is that when we want to make any adjustments, say to the highlights, if we move it to make it slightly brighter, it's actually inverted everything. So everything becomes darker. And similarly with the blacks, you want to make things black darker, remove that to the left, it's inverted it, so now it becomes lighter. So we have to invert everything there, which is actually quite a cumbersome way of doing things. So let's reset the picture. We'll go back down to the tone curve, and a simple way is to actually click on the drop down list of the tone curve and select negative. And there we've got conversion straight away for you. But as you can notice, there's a brownish tint or sepia tint on the image. Now this is because I actually scanned or digitized the negative using a raw file format. And the raw file format keeps all the color information intact. So if the film emulsion has got a slight tint to it, generally speaking they can be blue or slightly purplish tint, then the color cast will show here. So the best way of dealing with that is to go into the color tab and now we'll select the black and white setting there and that's neutralize that. So now the image is black and white. But there is a much better way of doing everything. So I'm going to reset the picture and I'm going to stay in the color tab and move down to the bottom here. And we've got a new section called scan film optimization. Now this isn't available in previous versions of PhotoLab. It's only available in PhotoLab 9, the latest version. So we click on the scan film optimization button and then we'll click on invert negative image and now it's just inverted all there and we'll reset this to black and white setting there okay so now we can actually use the tone curve to make any alterations the tone curve here hasn't got a histogram available for some reason so i'm going to go into the light tab and use this curve the tone curve here which has got a histogram. So we move the slider over with the histogram automatically appears. I can set the dark point there and I can set the light point there. So now we've got a quite well balanced photograph. At this stage here we know we can save these settings as a preset. So we go to the preset editor, click on this button here for new preset using the settings that are you've just set there and we'll call this one scan. So now this is set as a new preset and there it is. So if we reset the image there and we double click on the scan and it's all your settings are applied here. Now any other settings you make i.e. in the highlights, midtones and shadows etc. they're all going to be saved within your preset. So we, this isn't necessarily going to work for every image. So I suggest that just using this preset here to set the basic parameters for converting your negative into a positive. So now let's look at ways we can actually enhance this picture. 
because it was digitized using the lens attachment, there was a hot spot on this particular unit which made the center part lighter. But because we've inverted it, the edges which were dark on the original film digitizing have now become lighter. So we need to neutralize those. We'll go into the local adjustment setting on the right here. And I'm going to select gradient. If we just use the mouse wheel to scroll out, we can zoom in and out the picture here. And that's using the wheel. So now we we'll just drag up a section here and we can alter this now the tonal values by using the exposure slide here just balance it out so it makes it nice and neutral and i can use the same mask here to create yet another gradient on the left hand side here as it automatically applied the same settings as a, the previous one if i want to make it slightly darker i can move the whole unit there and just alter the tonality to suit the image. And again, we'll make another one on the right hand side here. And again, we just move that in and out. A better way, another way of doing this is to actually create new masks for each of the edges there so we can make individual adjustments. At the moment, any adjustments I make will apply to all of them. So if I move the slider over, all the edges will be altered simultaneously. Now the sky is looking a little bit bright on there, so I want to darken that down. So I'm going to actually now create a new mask. So we we'll click on the new mask button and we're going to select the control line. And we're going to drag a control line all the way down over there. So I'm just going to work on the sky now. Um, as we can see, the, the sky has actually gone over the tree there. So anything I want, any adjustments I make now are going to affect the tree as well. I don't want the tree affected. So let's even pull it down further. So the, a way of altering this is to go to the color overlay and we'll select black and white. And now we can see the areas. Anything that's black will be concealed. White will reveal. So let's move the select the tool and bring it down to an area there where we I think we've gained most detail there. Now to fine tune this, we'll use the Luma slide on the right hand side and just slide it over. Now we can see the bits that are going to be protected. They're all in black. White will reveal. So now our selection is just going to affect this white area only. All the black areas are going to be protected. So we go back into the color overlay. And incidentally, you can change the color of that overlay by clicking on that button there and just selecting any color you want. Um, I'm staying with red at the moment. We can fine tune there. We can see slight white haloing on the trees there. So let's just try and fine tune that a little bit better on there. And that should be okay there. And we can move the side around a bit more. And you'll see the image altering there. Like the trees here have got a slight haloing on there. And that looks about right to me. I'm going to bring the luma curve down just a fraction bit. There we go. And now we can make our exposure alterations on there. So let's just darken the sky a little bit more. And I'm going to add a little bit of micro contrast on there. It just gives it a little bit more shape on there. But as you can see, we've got a bit of darkening area here where the sky has actually affected the mask which we put on the left hand side. So let's select the masks for the left hand side there. And we're going to select the brush. And now with the brush, select the remove or minus. And now we can just brush over that area there. And that just takes that hot spot away from the left hand side there. Another new feature in the PhotoLab 9 is the artificial intelligence. And this will work on masking as well. So let's create a new layer. Now the image takes a little while for the automatic intelligence to look at the image and decide what needs to be done. Oops. So I'm going to highlight the road here and click on that. So now we've made a mask for the road. 
And what I want to do on there is just put a bit of micro contrast on the road just to bring out some more detail there. You can see if we go too far, it's going to look a bit unnatural. So only needs a fraction on there just to bring out the tracks in the road. Okay, so I want to make another adjustment on here. Area on here is a little bit too light. I'd like it to be a little bit darker. So let's go and create a new mask. And we're going to use a paintbrush now to paint in an area there. So now we can just darken that area a fraction bit. Doesn't need a lot of darkening on there. And put a bit of micro contrast on that as well, just to bring out the trees. Uh, maybe a little bit of highlights on there. A bit of bit more darkness in there. More contrast. You see how we're building up the picture. Now overall the picture is looking a little bit light still. So I'm going to go into the first tab here, the light one, and now we can make global adjustments to the entire image. So I'm going to take the mid midtones down a fraction, add a bit more darkness black to the image, and then we've got quite a nice mood image. And now we can just crop off the unwanted edges Use the crop tool there, zoom out a fraction bit. And if we go down to the aspect ratio, I'm going to select unconstrained. And this means I can actually just move individual edges to the way I want them and take off any excess unwanted areas. And then we click on the close button. I'm not sure why they call it close. It should be really apply. So click on the close button and there's your final image.